Hello, am I audible? Hello, good afternoon. Am I audible? So, yeah, uh, uh, good afternoon, all. Uh, I would like to first thank Mr. Uh, Dr. Ram Reddy and Professor Rahul Jivane who has invited me for this particular session. Uh, let me give you uh, all my first brief introduction. I am Ajay Agrawal. Uh, I am a computer science graduate uh, working currently with Airtel in a fixed line domain uh, as a head planning pan India. Uh, I have started my career in 1994 with BPL Telecom and uh, after spending a, around 6 years I have joined Tata Telecommunication on a uh, planning domain and after that I have worked with Alcatel, Lucent, Airtel and many old telecom so many 2-3 more organizations so this is about my brief introduction so uh, let me just present my screen uh, today i am going to share you on the think te uh, technology trend in telecom market and overview on the fixed line network so let's start with this So uh, first of all how the telecom is important in today's world. It is actually a truly uh, changing our uh, lives. Uh, it is changing our social uh, behavior how we are interacting with each other in a today's world. Without telecom we cannot uh, think anything. Uh, I mean in uh, recent uh, prime minister speech also he has mentioned that telecom is an essential service and without which we cannot connect to each other and there are many services that are running on telecom itself so as a study if you see a uh, word bank by word bank it has clearly told like if you will increase 10 percent of the mobile or broadband penetration it will increase the gdp by 0.8 to 1.4 percent in the developing country which means it is quite significant in terms of the role which telecom is doing right now in a corona kind of a scenario it is much more important right now to connect it each other so let me just go through how the telecom trends is moving towards in the world so if you see this particular slide you will see that out of total population of 7.6 billion which is out of which around 50 56 percent is the urbanization and if you see out of this total population of 7.6 billion around 5 billion are the unique mobile users which means our penetration of the mobile network is around 67 percent across world and out of this 7.6 billion if you see the internet users are 4.38 billion which is 57 percent of the total population uh, 
in between there are only voice callers not our internet users and out of the 7.6 billion around 3.4 billion are the active social media users who is currently using any kind of a media social medias like uh, uh, twitter or facebook or any other social medias and most of these users are on the mobile like 3.2 billion are on the mobile so most of the penetration is on the mobile side now coming uh, to the further deep down on this particular trend if you see uh, our population of worldwide is increasing 1.1% every year okay then the unique mobile users is also increasing 2% year on year uh, the internet users trend is also growing by 10% each year active social media users is growing by 9% and the mobile social media users is also going growing by the 10% so overall there is a very sharp growth across everywhere not only the urbanization in the rural area also you are seeing that there is a upward trends so if you see the device perspective if you see the device perspective out of 4.3 billion active internet users 57% are the total population and active mobile user internet user is 3.9 billion so i'm going further this thing that how the data growth is happening the last year in 2018 i mean in the 2018 it was 27 uh, exabyte of data which we were using in india now it is 36 exabyte and going by going year on year it is actually 30 to 40 percent increase every year on the data consumption when we comes to the fixed broadband kind of a penetration if you see out of 2 billion households only 50 percent is served through the fixed broadband and if you see out of this 0.9 billion house households are still unserved there is no broadband connectivity at all and whatever served is 0.9 of 1.1 billion households are served out of this around 50 percent are under served which means the speed which they are getting is less than 50 mbps so current situation only uh, if you you are using the browsing and some kind of chatting it is okay to use around 1 mbps or 2 mbps kind of a speed but when you are using a live conferencing video chatting or uh, video playing online gaming then definitely you are going to use more than 50 mbps so it is highly requirement uh, today's requirement that we should be able to use more than 50 mbps everywhere uh, recently there is a telecom policy by the indian government also which clearly tells us like we need to penetrate each and every area of the country i mean uh, and it is more than 2 mbps uh, 20 mbps requirement currently for the country if we go to the apec region asia pacific region the total household is around 1 billion out of which 67 percent is the home broadband penetration but if you see the india the penetration is only one percent so hardly any broadband penetration in the country so as per the new telecom policy the government is laid down the guidelines like we need to go to the each and individual villages for this and there are multiple uh, projects are already going so Bharatnet is such kind of a project and private operator like Airtel and Jio and everyone is participating in that. Uh, when you comes to the demographic of the country, if you see the India is very well placed. Now the time is for the India. Like if you see in 2020, most of the generation, our age generation is around 20 to 40 years of age, which means they are the actual users who are going to use this kind of a speed this kind of a uh, telecom infrastructure in most of the countries like european and us the age is towards the higher side more than 40 years so this is the time for india when we can make a change but current situation if you just see the fixed broadband uh, in terms of the speed we are ranked at 66 in uh, in a word and in the mobile broadband though we are using the 4g but still there are much more to do because there are many features phones are still working across india and uh, 4g and penetration yet to be 
there so still we are on the 128 rank in the mobile broadband speed and this speed is not only just a speed it is measured in different parameters like the internet connection drop time wedge page load time there are many features on which this is categorized so i am just taking through the corona impact how the corona has changed the telecom is now a essential service if you see the uh, previous uh, corona period the fixed broadband and after uh, corona impact there is 30 to 60% increase of the data is uh, consumption and the more and more demand is coming because everyone is working from the home so now fixed broadband is also doing a good job here and if you see the mobile broadband it is a 20 to 25% increase in the uh, consumption and uh, same way the mobile voice and the Wi-Fi calling and the fixed voice is also increasing day by day. If you see the residential segment, the major contribution is towards the online gaming, which is significantly increased from, from 72% to 400%. On the streaming side, the video streaming, it is 12% to 60% increase. The WhatsApp is 5x has increased. Online devices per home, earlier it, it was only two to three devices at a time was latching into the Wi-Fi. Right now in a home, it is more than five to ten devices. The TV is also less, the, all mobile phones are also less, so number of devices are also increasing. Then we come to the business. There are new things which are coming in nowadays. VPN is now coming, uh, everyone is working from home, so VPN is necessary for that, to work from home. Another thing which are coming like the Cisco, the Zoom, the Microsoft Teams. So these are the new platforms which are coming up very good. So they are required uh, the bandwidth, the connectivity and everything. So the telecom is now a need for everyone. Same way like the this is the uh, earlier one. I mean how it is changing the video conferencing and the video streaming. There are many things which mobile industries has done to cater this uh, growth in demand of uh, this bandwidth. So earlier how it was done, uh, the SD uh, content or the SD content was flowing, uh, playing at the maximum uh, pixels. Now we have done the partnership with the Amazon, YouTube and Netflix kind of a uh, partners so that they have reduced the bit size. So now the total consumption on the bandwidth has reduced so that we are able to cater every person's on this so what is the opportunity for us in today's world first is the coverage so still we are underserved and the opportunity is for us to actually roll out our network across india the another opportunity is to offload the cellular network because cellular network is too busy so wi-fi offload is another thing which is coming as a technology so voice over Wi-Fi is currently launched by Jio and Airtel. So what kind of a, if you are facing any voice challenges in a, in a home like the network issue. So you can offload your voice to the Wi-Fi and seamlessly it will be connected. The another thing is like Wi-Fi to the every room and every device. So nowadays like if suppose you have a router in your home, it can cover your bedroom or one hall, but you need a seamless coverage across the home. So the new thing which is coming up in a Wi-Fi is a mesh kind of a technology where you can cover complete home seamlessly. If you are moving from one home to another, it should not drop and you should get the correct speed everywhere. So what is the driving the broadband wave? So let us see what kind of a thing which is generating this kind of a traffic. First is the Gen C. Gen C is actually a generation C which means the connected consumers. So what is that? I mean the community through which we are connecting like the Facebook or the Twitter and everything like the creation of the content through YouTube, connectivity like a voice connectivity and curate like uh, you are sending some of the message and amplifying I mean to the mass audience. Another thing is like virtuous CCD cycle. So what is driving this? Earlier the content was very limited. Now the VOD is there. So uh, like a Netflix, Amazon, there are multiple contents are coming, Hotstar and the online gaming is coming. So content is driving the broadband wave. Another part is the connectivity. So the connectivity is also plays a 
major role here if the, your connectivity is not good then you can't use the broadband or the internet so everywhere now connectivity is coming up uh, the mobile towers are getting increased day by day and there is new concept called a small cell which is coming so that if there is a problem in your coverage area or the speed is not proper so mobile industry is putting up the small cells in streets and the colonies so that it can be covered third part is the device so earlier it was a feature phone now everyone is using a smartphone the smartphone is now uh, it uh, comes in a very reasonable price within 2000 to 4000 rupees you can get a smartphone and you can use uh, internet services so these are the three major things which are driving the broadband wave now coming to the actual technology evolution how the te telecom is moving uh, in the technology uh, trends so if you see uh, the journey has started with 1G in which is a, actually analog in a mobile device so at that point of time you might have seen like the voice minute is more than 36 rupees a minute so it is only for a voice for a rich person it was in 1980s but in India actually it comes around 1990s 1995 or 90s so it was a 2G kind of a thing which has come up where the digital voice and simple data was there the small data in a few kbps speed you were getting at that point of time after moving to this 2g because 2g is still there in the villages and every uh, because everyone is not going to purchase the smartphone so still 2g's are still there then between 2g and 4g there was a 3g for short duration 3g could not survive actually 3g because there is not a type of devices were there a word was going towards the mobile generation not a 3g so uh, 3g was intermediate step the cost was too high but the speed was not that good so so the industry has moved towards the 4g and 4g was a in between there was a 3g and 3.5g actually all uh, lte is a 3.5g and then comes to the 4G where you are getting a good speed. Still we have not completely exhausted with the 4G. There are multiple room there to use 4G. 5G is little time. There are countries like Korea and China and US which who are trying this 5G. And we are also ready as a India as a network infrastructure. But still there are yet to we are yet to go to the 5G. We are still on the 4G scenario. Why 5G, 5G is not there in India, that is uh, two or three reasons actually. One is like the 5G spectrum cost is too high. So still the government is thinking about the 5G option and the, the way the telecom industry is put up into the lot of pressure, so they are unable to auction this 5G. The another point is rolling out the 5G it requires a tremendous infrastructure because 5G is a millimeter wave. It is a very high frequency. It can't go beyond distance. It is up to 200 meter max. You will get the good speed. So you need a multiple mobile tower, multiple infrastructure like a fiber backhaul. That is when you can only go to the 5G. So in India, I can see around two to three years from now where we will move from 4G to 5G. 5G trials are there but actually in field it will take some time. So how the mobile industries across the world is moving like first was the feature phone era that I was just told it was only for the voice calls, the SMS and the multimedia messages then come to the smartphone era where we are right now. So one is the social media we are there then the app economy is there like we are using multiple kind of apps which are creating a economic growth also the IP messaging like a WhatsApp or Twitter anything and the mobile commerce now coming towards a hyper connected future where the big data will be a future big data the internet of things so internet of things will also be a game changer it is a machine to machine calling so millions of devices has to interact to each other and the, the digital society and the sharing the economies. So why, where uh, your fixed line can serve, where your 5G required, where is your 4G required, this chart is showing 
these things like if you see the gray charts so gray chart is telling where the minimum latency is required like the autonomous driving so autonomous driving is the driverless car driving if in this case if suppose there is a, any delay then accident will happen so there the delay is very very crucial it cannot be more than 2 to 3 milliseconds delay and the speed is also required good quite high there another thing which is required like the augmented reality and the virtual reality so there are games there are many things the online uh, workshops which required a very high bandwidth virtual reality and the augmented reality actually required more than a 100 mbps of a speed kind of a gigabit speed and the very low latency but there are something which is there into the fixed mode the white uh, rectangle is showing which is not as much as delay sensitive which is can be served through either the 4g or either the fixed line service the gray one is for the 5g services like if you there is a dotted uh, ellipse where you can see there are many things which can be served through the fixed line like the monitoring of sensors the sensor are like the door open sensor, the fire sensor, the movement motion sensors, the device remote control. All these can be served through the fixed line. Now, another things which are required, which can be served through the 4G, like the automotive e-call, disaster alert, the real time gaming, these kind or the video streaming, these kind of a services can be served through the 4G. So this chart is telling about this thing. So in, uh, if you go into the 5G, what kind of a things you can do through the 5G? First of all, it can connect hundreds and millions of devices like the sensors and the multiple devices will connect to each other. It requires the very low latency. If suppose today's latency is 20 to 40 milliseconds, this required between 1 to 5 milliseconds of latencies. The, the data rate in which we are currently working it is kind of a uh, if you see the 4g mobile set it is normally 10 to 15 mbps speed you will get but in case of these kind of a services when we are coming up with the 5g it requires 10x and 100x of the data rate speed another thing which is quite significant um, major here is the battery life battery life has to be much much more because like the sensors and in various things it will not be a directly power pl power plug it will work on the battery so battery uses also has to be minimized in the 5g then comes to the various services where the 5g can be uh, useful like the smart homes and the buildings connected everything okay then the health and service sectors critical in infrastructure okay 5G is required where failure is not an option. You can't uh, uh, have an option for the failure. It has to be accurate. Otherwise, it will be a severe impact on the lives. So, if you see the mega trends in next 5 years, what all are the top 10 technologies which will govern the technology? First 3 are, I am just checking uh, taking like the artificial intelligence that is going to be a crucial thing it is crucial right now also but in next five years it will be a more more important for things like the automation the predictive analysis through the artificial intelligence okay more more co customer experience is now going to be a major thing then artificial intelligence for the predictive behavior has to be there next comes to the internet of things like the iot the smart homes the smart smart cities that is going to be a major thing machine to machine learning machine to machine communication the another big thing is which uh, we see as a robotics and the automation which is going to be a crucial thing in next five years uh, next seven things are like the cyber security which is also going to be uh, playing major roles then the big data analytics another five things are like the energy and the batteries which i have just spoken about the blockchain blockchain is just like a decentralized things okay i am just giving you an example like the google doc okay if you are using a google doc and five persons wants to share uh, and update each and everything on the document it has to be transparently seen to everyone so this is a, just a 
brief example of the blockchain then the 5g is also a major thing which is coming into the next 5 year the cloud it is actually a cloud is going uh, is also a very major thing because nowadays infrastructure sharing is a major thing you cannot expand uh, the your uh, thing without the cloud you have to share the resources and like uh, amazon cloud and uh, there are many clouds is coming up so cloud has to be there so whatever technology we are uh, uh, teaching to the students or they are learning these seven eight technologies are going to be a major differentiator in next five to ten years so like data and ai are the key to the future network so more and more data is coming to the mobile sites we cannot like a mobile operator it cannot be a, just a pipe it cannot be just a infrastructure it has to uh, collect all the data analyze that data and put up some artificial intelligence to make this data useful so the network complexity is increasing day by day there are multiple kind of a technology from g900 g700 g1800 these are the mobile technologies which are coming up then there is a traffic is growing day by day but revenue is coming down the per bit cost is coming down so so the total massive today massive amounts of data constantly hitting the mobile network so this is a word like data is the new oil it's the valuable but if unrefined it cannot really be used so we have to define the usability of this the iot which i was just telling about iot is the next big changer uh, for the market so they are like smart building smart cities smart vehicle smart homes smart manufacturing so everywhere there is a automation is coming up okay and that each device has to connect every, each devices and for this there are application coming up for that the platform has to be there connectivity has to be there device management has to be there cloud has to be there that can be a private that can be a public or the private plus public hybrid cloud can be there the data analytics also is going to be a major thing like the application analytics predictive analytics and the artificial intelligence security is going to be a very big one like the managed security more and more data is coming then the data security is going to be a very critical one and the professional services are coming up like the consulting service integration and the managed services so many many uh, partners many vendors are working on each and every domains of this another thing which is going to change the life is the customer trends so most of the customers if you see the two major countries like the china and india is contributing more than the 50% of the telecom share and rest of the world it is very minimal long tails are there so we need some kind of a thing which will keep these customer together it cannot just be a connectivity we have to be a service provider i mean provide some kind of a bundled service so to keep engage all these uh, persons next thing is the robots which is going to change transform the industries so there are many sectors which are going to change like the financial sectors the automotive sectors the agriculture sectors the manufacturing sectors the defense sectors the healthcare sector everywhere you will see there will be a robotics and the automation is going to be there so this is a next stream which will change and transform the industries so if you see the i step work i step only you will see the app behind that app there are many things behind this app like the mobile network is supporting that the gps network the image server the bank database the navigation router so there are many many things but consumer only see the app so behind this there are many many industries working on this so i am now going to just give you a overview on the fixed broadband evaluation uh, the mobile broadband we have seen from 1g to the 5g in the fixed broadband also there is a evaluation if you uh, remember the 
journey started with normal plain old telephone set the ports then comes to the uh, ISDN which is only a 64 kbps of a thing on the twisted pair then comes to the ADSL and ADSL 2 plus so ADSL 2 plus only gives up to the 16 mbps of a speed maximum up to 700 meter distance in ADSL then comes to the VDSL which is a very high uh, data speed uh, link so it can go up to the 100 mbps speed or 80 mbps speed but the stability is not there so the next thing which comes to the VDSL to support that it was the vectoring which actually cancels the crosstalk and you can achieve the 100 mbps speed with stability in the VDSL the stability was not there the link may got drop but in the vectoring case it actually stables then comes to the super vector it is actually a 350 mbps kind of a speed with 200 meter distance the vectoring or VDSL works in 17 megahertz kind of a spectrum like in ADSL 2 plus it works only 2.2 uh, megahertz the next stage of the development in the copper line it is a g.fast which is actually a 1 gigabit speed on the copper the trials are already there the actual commercials are already there in the european and us countries in india it is not picked up because the next technology is come up we are not going with the copper rather we are moving towards the fiber in the cable also the fixed line actually works earlier on the copper then cable also is a major uh, uh, media where the internet works in the fixed line so doxis is a technology uh, where, which actually uh, carry the internet bent, uh, traffic over the normal cable so uh, if you see uh, doxis 1.0 it is only a 40 mbps speed on the downlink side but it is actually shared amongst multiple users 8 to 10 users so actual speed which customer get is very less so it has changed from doxis 1.0 to doxis 3.1 currently most of the like in the us the uh, comcast is using this kind of a technology doxis 3.1 which is giving you a 10 gbps kind of a speed and it is shared amongst i mean 100 to 200 users so and now new thing which is coming is the full duplex 3.1 which can give you a symmetric kind of a bandwidth in downstream and the upstream 10 gbps in download and upload both the ftth is the next generation uh, fixed line network which is the fiber to the home the fiber to the home actually started in 2008 with gpon technology this is a gigabit passive optical network which gives you up to the 2.5 gig download and 1.25 gig of a upload speed and maximum you can give up to the 64 customers so which means uh, simultaneously 40 mbps speed can be served to the 64 customers okay then comes to the xg pawn which is the 10g pawn 10g pawn is the 10g in the downlink side but 2.5g in the uplink side because upload traffic is normally lower than the download traffic every person use more most of the download traffic then comes to the xgs phone which is 10g phone symmetric phone this is come this has come up in 2017 which is 10g uplink and 10g downlink this is mainly used in the b2b scenario where business customers are there like uh, industries are there or the you need a mobile backhaul the XG pawn or the G pawn technology is used mainly in the residential segment. Now NG pawn is coming where N into 10G can be there. So we are using a uh, WDM technology where multiple lambdas are mixed, multiple wavelength are mixed on the same fiber, and it has it transmitted. So 40 gig kind of a bandwidth you can uh, achieve through this next step is coming towards the 25 and 50 gig uh, pawn to meet the industry requirement another thing which is uh, change in the technology is the wi-fi so wi-fi if you see it it is it is uh, having a uh, 802.11 a b g n kind of a thing but i am just taking i am not discussing about uh, wi-fi 1 2 or 3 because it is quite old so Wi-Fi 4 it is started like a good speed 
it can give you a kind of a 300 mbps of a speed but it is a half duplex which means 150 mbps on upload and 150 mbps on the download side so we call as a 802.11n most of the devices mobile devices and laptops comes with the 802.11n so itut has given this name as a wi-fi 4 okay so normally hd voice or game you can play on the wi-fi 4 then comes to the wi-fi 5 which is a 802.11ac this this actually works on the 256 qam so uh, they are it uh, you can use in the 40 and 80 megahertz kind of a channel and in the 802.11n it was only 20 and 40 megahertz channel so bandwidth is quite high you can uh, achieve around 3.5 gbps of a speed in 4x4 MIMO. MIMO means multiple input and multiple outputs which means multiple streams are sent from uh, modem on the Wi-Fi radio to the device and device should also support the multiple uh, MIMO uh, technology. So this is mainly used in the 4K video or the VR or the games kind of a thing. Now Wi-Fi 6 like 802.11 AX trials are also going this is coming up which is using 1024 QAM okay and the OFDMA technology where you can actually achieve 9.6 Gbps of a speed and normally Wi-Fi 5 uh, if you see it works mainly on the 5 gigahertz channel so uh, Wi-Fi actually works in two major frequency one on both these frequency are the free free band one is the 2.4 gigahertz band and one is the 5 gigahertz band so 802.11 AC is mainly works in the 5 gigahertz band so when you increase the frequency the penetration is very low so which means if you are using 802.11 AC 5 gigahertz band the speed is very good but the Wi-Fi signal cannot cross one or two wall or maybe 20 to 25 meter. So you need a multiple extender or the mesh device to penetrate the signal. Wi-Fi 6 has a, another advantage which is I mean it can penetrate one more wall. So if the modem is in the drawing room and you are sitting in a, another room Wi-Fi 6 actually can reach up to that uh, through the multiple beam technology and this OFDM technology. So actually this particular technology will be useful for to play the 8K video, the advanced VR, the VR games, the smart office and all. So on the mobile side it is the, the 1G to 5G and if you see the fixed uh, line uh, technology evolution it is the copper from ADSL, VDSL, Vector uh, to the GFAST then comes to the uh, cable DOCSIS from DOCSIS 1 to DOCSIS 3.1 and the FTTH from GPON to the XGPON, the XGS pawn, the NG pawn, and now 25th giant and then the Wi-Fi technology which is Wi-Fi 6 now coming up so this is the simple uh, technology by technology I am ju just giving you a brief uh, about the technology one first one was the ADSL 2 plus where the twisted pair was used and up to the 2.2 megahertz frequency were using and maximum 16 mbps kind of a speed you can get the upload is very minimal I mean only you can get 600 to 700 kbps kind of a speed the download can be a 16 mbps then comes to the vectoring which works in the 17 megahertz spectrum rather than 2.2 only so without vectoring if you see the original signal if the crosstalk is there the the signal you receive at the receiver end is distorted and you will not get the proper signal in the VDSL only if you go with the vectoring how it works actually when the original signal is transmitted the negative crosstalk is added to the signal and you will actually get the original signal so in case of vectoring is actually uh, cancels the foreign crosstalk. Now comes to the passive optical network which is a FTTH. What is the pawn actually? So if you see the OLT is the optical line terminal where multiple pawns are connected, multiple uh, fibers are connected. Each fiber in case of a pawn or G pawn, a single fiber is used for upload and download both kind of a traffic. It actually works on the two different 
lambdas one is the 1490 nanometer and one is the 1310 nanometer so trans and receive on the single fiber first advantage on the jpon is that it uses less number of fiber the another thing which works as a principle in pon it actually uh, split the fiber so if suppose olt it is coming up a single fiber you place a splitter which actually splits the light it can be a 1 is to 2 splitter 1 is to 8 splitter 1 is to 16 or 1 is to 64 so maximum 64 splits you can do so one pawn can serve up to the 64 customer this passive optical splitter doesn't require any kind of a power in between so you can go up to the 20 km rather if you were using the copper it was hardly 1 km of a range but if you are using the fttth kind of a technology you can go up to the 20 km it only requires the power budget to reach to the uh, end location so a pawn network is a point to multi point passive optical network a point uh, pawn network consists of the optical line which is uh, terminal which is a main olt which is a aggregator of all the pawn the o and new uh, which is actually a uh, modem kind of a thing which is placed at the customer uh, premises Uh, which terminates the optical fiber and then it processes the signal so how the jpon technology actually works it's a simple uh, phenomena when it is towards the download side okay from olt to the ont it works into the 14 10 19 nanometer uh, wavelength and when ont to the olt it works in the 13 10 nanometer okay and when it is from the olt to ont it is a broadcast kind of a thing which means when olt is transmitting one particular signal each ont or each customer will receive that particular signal but basis on the authentication the only uh, well, uh, verified user can accept that signal remaining other will discard that signal but from the ont to the olt it is a time divisional multiplexing so every ont gets its access time in which it has to transmit to the signal so this is a technology so it is just giving you a brief idea of how the transmission is happening if suppose one or two and three number of packet is going so it is going to the each and every ont the end customer but the recipient will accept only which it deserve like the ont terminal 1 is accepting only signal number 1 and same, same way like two and three on the upstream side it is time wise time each ont has a def, uh, definite time slot in which it has to transmit the signal to the olt so uh, uh, this is a infrastructure if you see a fixed line infrastructure how the infrastructure looks like so i am starting from the customer home it is normally a drop wire which comes to the passive network like a splitter which i just telling 1 is to 8 or 1 is to 16 in between there are the simple passive otbs which is a termination box optical termination box then comes to the multi service access node or the optical line terminal which actually aggregate all the ont's and then it will this olt connect to the transport network which is a kind of a carrier ethernet network or any kind of ip network it is end to end digital it is a ip network the sen can work as a broadband remote access server which is actually uh, giving a uh, ip to the actual customer it is actually at the back end of the bres or the core is actually a aaa or the radius server or the ldap where actually customer is provisioned authenticated and also the cdr accounting is happening uh, at the back end of the bres then it goes to the internet clouds so this is the plain simple architecture of the fixed line and the stakeholders of this architecture is a call center the nog the isp engineer which means the active uh, engineer who actually maintain this the fault repair engineer who goes to the customer place and repair the drop fiber or the splitter or the any mechanical things and all the installer so these are the various stakeholders of this then if you go to the deep into the network the requirement is currently a particular olt or what i was just telling aggregator is serving to a one particular location for one particular operator but now coming a days we need to use a infrastructure sharing 
like in case of mobile tower everyone is using the common infrastructure same way the olt has to be shared among the different operator or different business units like there could be a uh, residential uh, business unit there can be a business to business uh, uh, unit or there could be a mobile unit so every unit has a different requirement uh, one segment may require only the bandwidth the another segment required the latency the another operator may require different kind of a thing so the software defined access network is coming up where you can slice your olt so you can differentiate basis on the services basis on the operator so this is the new thing which is coming into the fixed line technology so the fixed line technology is also growing into that direction the, the thing which why 5g uh, requires the ftth or the fixed line because you know the 5g requires a very huge infrastructure because it it is using a multi, uh, millimeter wave it cannot go beyond 200 meter so you need a uh, multiple towers in a street and everywhere so the, you cannot lay a transport never network everywhere so this ftth is going to serve like a backhaul for the 5g network so whenever we roll out any ftth network we roll out uh, like a way it can support to the 5g so i have put up the dotted line where you can plan the 5g network the green lines green dots are already there for the ftts so this uh, synergy has to be there for the 5g rollout it will reduce the cost it will re reduce the rollout efforts and this is the broad level ftth architecture uh, that i was just telling the olt is the center office and from there uh, the odf is the optical distribution frame there, where the all the pon ports are connecting to the odf on the fiber patch cord from odf there is a feeder cable going into the field into the multiple direction in between there are joint closers or the handles from there is a it can be a overhead drop fiber or it's a underground drop fiber it's going up to the customer home or the buildings and within the building there is a riser cable which go into the soft and it connects to the customer this is a broad level ftth architecture so uh, what is the success mantra uh, for this uh, technology trends one is like we have to be adaptive to change change is the only constant thing okay so uh, we have to take the risk right now it is not a small change okay so it is not the strongest that survives nor intelligent but the one most responsive to the change that is the main punch line uh charles darwin has written now another thing is we have to be upskilled because nowadays coming uh, new and new technologies are coming we should not be afraid to understand the new technology we should use this technology and move forward so learning is like a roaring up stream not to advance is to drop back another thing is an act scale so think big it cannot be a small small thing which can change the thing you have to think the big dream big so make no little plans they have no magic to steer men's blood so that is th per one another thing success mantra is the demonstrate speed so if you are doing everything but speed is not there someone will come and guess the chances so speed has to be there that is jodita vai sekandar so that is from my side uh if so if you have any question i am ready to take or if i am not able to answer i can give you a feedback or i can give you a written answer on that uh, i can float my email id so that you can reach to me and i can give you answer on that
so uh, it is around a 57 percent if you see the internet users So thank you everyone, I mean uh, hopefully I am able to give you uh, some kind of a brief introduction on the telecom technologies which is there in the mobile and the fixed line domain. In the next 5 years is it, it is actually uh, more and more new things are coming like the which I have already told the robotics, the AI, so it is uh, tel truly tel telecom the, and the IT feature. I think there is no question. 